If you remember the introduction to the great affordable 1911 series, you'll recall that there was one blank spot in our uh, program of guns to shoot over this 22-part uh, series. When we get into the officer-sized pistols, we were missing something to compare with the Les Bear Stinger. Now again, uh, the Les Bear Stinger to some may not be an affordable 1911, but go to our website and read our definition of affordable, www.ridersrange.com, and uh, you'll see that in fact that Les Bear was affordable, at least it met our criteria. A viewer suggested that we look at a particular gun to compare with the Stinger, and he suggested what we just picked up here at Ann Arbor Arms. And here it is today, it's an out of the box to the range for the Dan Wesson Point Man Carry. And here it is. Noise in the background, that's on the adjacent range. Uh, we'll see how it shows up in the particular video. So the Point Man Carry is the same thing as the Stinger, effectively. It's a steel framed 45. It's got uh, a commander size four and a quarter inch slide and barrel on top of an officer size frame. This particular gun is uh, again, just out of the box. I did check it out uh, at the range counter when I signed for it. It is all stainless steel, checkered front strap. It feels like probably about 25 lines checkered back strap and the nice thing about the Dan Wesson compacts they have that rounded grip frame which is just perfect for fit in the hand and for carry if I ever decide to carry this thing really nice positive safety and so far a good feel on the on the slide release the trigger on this is I'm going to have to weigh it, but I'm guessing this is going to come in at under three and a half pounds. Black rear sight, red fiber optic front sight, uh, nice checkered wood grips. This, this gun just really feels good in the hand. And we're going to see how it works. We're going to go over to the other range here in just a minute to see how the Dan Wesson Point Man Carry works out of the box to the range for rider's range. Dan Wesson, Point Man Carry, out of the box to the range. We're here at Ann Arbor Arms. We're going to put the first shots through it, like we usually do, at 15 yards. And see how this Point Man Carry really works. After we get done here, we're going to take it to Rider's Range and shoot some steel. interesting very first shots and that one did not come out of the magazine and chamber the magazine locked back now this isn't the magazine that came with it so I'll give her credit for that we'll try another one. all right that's interesting I got the magazine out of it and the gun is still as you can see it's locked back um, the uh, slide stop is not engaged in the slide I can move the slide back but I can't push it back forward again. Never had a hang up like this with a Dan Wesson or for that matter, I haven't had it with any other 1911. We're gonna work on it some more and see what the issue is. So got six shots off nicely and I wasn't gonna do number seven. All right, that's as far as I can get it pushed forward. I can't move it from here. The barrel has play in it, so it's not binding there. We did get it to the slide stop point, at, uh, excuse me, to where the slide stop lever could come out at one point. Got it past the notch and got it about, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch out and the slide stop lever wouldn't go any farther either. So I've never encountered this on any 1911. Uh, again, particularly with the, uh, the barrel being free, somehow the slide is hanging up on the frame and I'm not sure where yet. We have to do more work on it, so we're not going to hit steel today, that's for sure. This may end up going back to Dan Wesson. Kind of disappointing because it's a great feeling gun. I like everything about it so far, but it's not working. 
Stay tuned for more from Riders Range. Dan Wilson, Point Man Carry. Um, it locked up on us after six rounds. Uh, Dan Wessons have always had good tolerances. I've never had one that's been quite as tight as this particular gun. Uh, it was tight. With the help of uh, Annabur Arms, we got it apart, lubed it, put it back together, and I guess a couple of things from this. Number one, an out of the box on a very precisely fitted gun. Yeah, lube it first, although I've never done that with any others. I like to run it just like that, out of the box. And the second point on this is that while a polymer frame gun may work right out of the box, the more precision guns, eh, probably ought to spend a little more time with them. Again, this is really tightly fitted, and I think when it heated up, uh, that's when it started locking up. It's got a good bath of oil on it now, and it seems to be okay. We're going to see what happens after a few shots. So it's uh, to the range, and let's see how it works at 12, and if it continues to work, we'll try 25 and then 50. Dan Wesson, Point Man Carry. See how the first seven rounds of 45 ACP works, or if it's going to heat it up too much and lock it up. Didn't even take seven rounds. And again, that was with a good bath of oil. And it's still, there's no magazine, there's nothing in there to lock it up. That's just tight tolerances. One shot heated this thing up enough to make it locked up just as tight as a drum. Back to the drawing board with the Dan Wesson Point Man C. I really had high hopes for this Dan Wesson Point Man carry. I've got six other Dan Wessons. This was number seven, and I've always been of the impression that Dan Wesson made the premier production 1911 pistols and I'd put them up against even a an Ed Brown or a Wilson Combat any day. So I had a lot of hopes when I got this and the uh, the first shots I thought were going to be great. It was accurate. I checked it out of the box. Uh, rails weren't bone dry so an out of the box review should fit. But as you uh, saw six rounds and it locked up tight. We got it apart in our arms and lubed it up uh, so it's almost dripping with oil and took it to the outdoor range and you can also see from the reviews I got one shot out of it and locked up tight. The uh, the slide, I, I took the, the barrel and recoil spring and everything out of it and you can see these rails are just about dripping wet and it's got significant resistance right there. I can push it beyond that, more resistance. I can pound it farther than that with the heel of my hand but there's a, a lot of resistance on that and just trying to pull it back off is tough. Now, I don't know if you can see it there or not but mainly on this rail right at the top it's dry that means it's, it's rubbing there um, everything else you can see is pretty wet but it's almost like they didn't lap that or fit it in. I, I don't see any issues so much on the sides of the rails yeah, maybe some on the on the side of this one. It's almost like they never quite finished it off. So I don't know. I uh, I probably could take the time to lap it in, but in, again, on uh, a gun that has a manufacturer's list price of fifteen hundred and ninety-seven dollars, I shouldn't have to do anything to it. I should be able to take it out of the box. The worst case is put a few drops of oil on it and be able to run it forever. Um, all my other nineteen elevens out of the box, they work. Um, so, I don't know, it's going to go back to the mothership, we'll get a hold of them tomorrow and um, maybe even send them a copy of this video and say, hey folks, what do you think? Um, this is never should have made it past their inspector, this is certainly not an example of quality control. So, let's uh, see how quickly Dan Wesson will redeem itself and uh, once, once we get it back, this should be, I hope, a, a worthy um, gun to put up against the Les Bear Stinger in part 15 of the Great Affordable 1911 series. Stay tuned for more from Riders Range on the Dan Wesson Point Man Carry.